Plumbing 101, top seven injuries for the trades. Now, I'm gonna talk about plumbing mainly, but a lot of these injuries can happen to everybody in the trades. The first one I'm gonna talk about is tendon, ligament, and muscle strain. Now, I just separated my bicep. I actually had my bicep detach from my elbow. Now, I gotta tell you, that hurt like heck. Watch your profanity. Now, I was at home trying to lift a locker and move it over into my home office. And when I bent down and picked it up, I don't know if it's that I hadn't stretched, that I, my muscles weren't warmed up, whatever it was, but when I pulled up, I felt a pop. Actually, I felt a pop pop. And I gotta tell you, when I looked down, my bicep muscle was up here. Now, the pain of that was excruciating. But, thinking about it later, I probably should have had somebody give me a hand. So think about the things that you do and the injuries are possible injuries you're putting yourself in a position to get and what could you do to avoid those. So tendons, ligaments, and muscles, that's something that you need to think about every time you do something. Whether you're working overhead, whether you're picking stuff up, even sometimes just getting down and crawling around. What can you do to help keep yourself from getting injured? Now number two, slips and falls. And I say slips, trips, and falls, because a lot of times there's things on a job site, whether you're at a home or whether you're out on a construction site, a lot of times there's things out there that can cause problems. Now, this happens a lot more than you think, especially for plumbers, because we work in wet areas, meaning we may be in a commercial kitchen, we may be draining a water heater, something may be going on to get the floor wet. Now, if the floor is wet, it makes it really easier to slip. And if you slip and you're carrying something, think about it, you can twist a really funny way and really hurt yourself. It's not just the embarrassment, because of course, when everybody falls, first thing they do is look around to see who saw them. Who that? Who dare? I get that. But if you're carrying something or you're not ready for it, or maybe you just, you don't know what's there, so you move funny, you can literally hurt your body very bad. So. Think about things. Whenever you go to move around, turn and look and see what's there. And I gotta tell you, I actually slipped coming down a ladder one day and fell backwards. And this was the scariest injury that I've ever had because when I hit the ground, I felt it rip right between my legs. And what happened is there was a piece of conduit about six inches long sticking up through the floor. And what happened there is it literally ripped my jeans and ripped my underwear. Now, luckily, it didn't touch my skin, thank God. But not watching what I was doing coming down the ladder, not knowing exactly where I was, that was a problem. But luckily for me, I survived, everything survived, and I'm doing okay today. But I gotta tell you, ever since then, I'm extremely careful climbing down the ladder each and every time. Next one is suffocation, and this is one that a lot of people don't think about, and this really can be a problem for welders, for plumbers, for anybody with an open flame. You can actually burn up all the oxygen in a room very easy and not even realize it. I remember one time I was working in a basement and this wasn't really a basement, it was just, it was a lower level and we were in there soldering trying to hook up some boilers. Now, we had been soldering for a while and all of a sudden I'm, I'm soldering the bottom connection and all of a sudden I realize I'm getting real dizzy. And I'm getting really lightheaded and then all of a sudden my flame went out. What I realized was, okay, there's no oxygen here. And once we stood up and got above the floor level for the entry doors, everything was much better. Think about the things you're doing and what position you're putting yourself in. Are you doing something that can be eliminating the oxygen? Are you doing something that can take all the oxygen out of the air and make it hard for you to breathe? Sometimes you don't realize it. You just think, man, I'm really getting tired. I'm exhausted, it's been a long day. Your, your thought process changes a whole lot when you lose oxygen. Putting yourself in a position where you can suffocate and possibly even die is not a good position to be in. So think about that as plumbers. It's not just a basement area or a lower level. Trenches, tanks, anywhere we may be in, it can be very dangerous. So be very careful out there. Next is eye injuries. And be very careful anytime you're doing anything that can cause eye injuries. If you're grinding, if you're even working maybe under a kitchen sink where you're having to look up and things can fall in your eyes. Here's the thing, safety glasses can help protect your eyes, but they can't guarantee that nothing happens. There may be things that you need other than that, maybe a full shield, maybe a mono shield, anything at all that can help protect your eyes even further. 
Now, most eye injuries can come from the front, but it is possible if you're out working in a windy area or maybe where there's just there's a lot of air moving for a fan or something, things can blow in your glasses and get into your eye. Eye injuries are a pain and there's nothing more irritating than to have something in your eye that you can't get it out and say, I'm blinking right now just thinking about it. Be very careful anytime you're working around anything that can get put things in the air that could damage people's eyes. And don't just think about yourself. If you're grinding, who else is in your work area? Who's around you that could get into something that you, know, you could cause problems for? Don't get me wrong, I would hate to damage my eyes, but it would literally break my heart to damage somebody else's eyes. So always think about who's around you and are they protected from whatever you're doing. Now, another big one is hearing damage. Now, hearing damage is one, of course, we all think, look, that'll never happen to me. But working around extremely loud machines, equipment, tools, you can actually damage your hearing. Can you imagine that about 48% of the plumbers actually have a loss of hearing? Now, I get told all the time, I know, I know you're deaf. Well, the problem is I'm not, but I know that I have damaged my hearing over the years and it's made it where I can hear less and less. At home, I actually turn the TV up louder just to make sure that I can hear it. Sometimes that bothers other people too. So think about it, especially if you're young and getting into the trades, take care of your hearing from the very beginning. Even if it's just the foam inserts that you stick inside your ear, make sure you get some good ones, make sure you wear them on a regular basis and make it something you get used to all the time. I think it was really neat. The safety glasses that used to have the earplugs with them. So literally when you put them on, they were dangling here, you just stuck them in. This helps you protect your hearing and your eyesight all at the same time. So think about the things that you can do. Think about the things that can make your life easier for as long as you can. And think about it when you're older, when you have grandkids and you wanna be able to talk to them and play with them and hear what they have to say. Taking care of your hearing, taking care of your eyesight, things like that now can possibly make the rest of your life even better. Number six, back injuries. Now think about this, we just talked about your grandkids, okay? And you may not even have them yet, they just may be something you're thinking about having or practicing to have. Anyway, start thinking about that now because I gotta tell you, when my back is bothering me, I have a hard time picking up my grandkids. And when you've got a granddaughter that comes up to you and holds her arms up and says, hey, Papa, pick me up, and you can't, that's pretty bad. And I gotta tell you, I've been there. But how do we avoid that? Number one, if you're lifting heavy things, ask for help. Get another plumber, get somebody else on your crew, say, hey man, give me a help, I need to move this pipe from here to there. Or make sure you've got the right equipment. Do you have a dolly? Do you have a pipe dolly? Do you have a roustabout? What do you have that can help you get things from where they're at to where they need to be? And does your company supply the right things? Do you have the equipment to hang pipe up in the air? Or are you doing like I used to do? Just throw it on your shoulder, climb up the ladder, and then fight it when you're there. There's a lot of different ways to do it. And luckily, we've got tools and equipment now that can make our job easier. Make sure you're using everything that you can to keep you from having back problems. This is one that once you get it, once you damage it, there's not a lot of repair for it. And if you do decide to have to have surgery or something like that, you never get any guarantees and you never know what other kind of damage may be caused by that. Now the last injury is one that really we don't face a lot down here in Texas, but there are issues with it. And that's extreme hot and extreme cold. You can get hypothermia or you can also have heat stroke. You can have different thing happen depending on what the temperature is. If it's too cold or if it's too hot, are you doing everything you can to protect yourself? Are you wearing enough layers? Do you have the right gloves? Do you have a toboggan that'll go under your hard hat? Or if it's hot outside, do you have something you can put around your neck to help keep you cool? Are you staying hydrated enough? And believe it or not, you need to stay hydrated all the time, not just when it's too hot, but also when it's cold. Actually, hydration is something you need to work on all day, every day. Now, these are really seven of the biggest problems and seven of the biggest injuries that I've seen over my course of the years. Do me a favor, let me know if you've ever had any of these happen to you. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what injury was it and how long were you off work? Because I've had those injuries. I actually had a wall fall on me. What did he say? I know that sounds crazy. The structural steel people had built a wall and leaned it up against the side of the building. Well, there was an opening where you could go out and get to the power box. I went out and actually plugged a cord in. As I was coming back in, that wall slipped in the mud because it was wet outside and fell over and actually pinned me under it. And I don't remember which way my arm was turned. 
But I gotta tell you, it messed up my shoulder. And actually, it was my left shoulder, I had to think about that. But it messed it up to where I had to have surgery. Now, I was off work for about eight to 10 weeks. And I gotta tell you, that is no fun. Being off work, being injured, not being able to pay your bills, and not being able to get out and do the job that you're hired to do, it'll really mess up your attitude. Anyway, do me a favor and leave me a comment down below and let me know what injury have you been through and how long were you off work. And if I didn't mention something about things people can do to protect themselves, also let me know what you think. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.